everyone, and welcome back to... Today is episode 30. The Tres X. It's a pretty cool episode number. 30. It's a pretty big deal to me. 30 was my first ever basketball number. I didn't know that. Yeah. Mine uh, was one. Oh, dang, that's pretty Cause cool. Because that was the smallest jersey they had. See, kind of on a similar note, I was the only sixth grader on my entire basketball team, so I got to pick last. So everybody was like, I want 23, I want, you know, like all the cool numbers, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, you know, whatever, Yao Ming. 23, 24. What was Yao Ming's number? 11. It would have been, it probably would have been eight at the time because Kobe hadn't switched his number over yet. Or like, 34, I'm Shaquille O'Neal, oh, 41, I'm Dirk Nowitzki. And I got 30, and I was like, I'm Rasheed Wallace, I'm going to talk the maddest smack to each of y'all. So that was pretty cool. Today, episode 30, here's a little math for you. When you think, how do you divide 30? The first thing that probably comes to your head is 10 and 3. So, it's an interesting little thing. Instead of making a list of 30 things we liked about Star Wars, which would take forever, uh, we decided to do uh, something a little bit different, and we wanted to do 10 things that we love about, we the, love big about the big three, Revenge of the Sith. Revenge of the Sith has been on our minds recently. I don't yeah, know if you've noticed I, that. We've been talking about it a lot. I watched it recently. I just really wanted to. Um, wow, that's a nice sound. Yeah, I'm so excited. I, I'm bringing a... Uh, I introduced Josiah to a new root beer. Sprecher Fine Brewed Root Beer. Sprecher. Sprecher. Sprecher is a root beer. Uh, yeah, but anyway, keep it on track. Well, I, th- I think I was reading Plagueis, and wow. that kind of got me on a prequels kick, and then I watched episode three, and it's just so good. And I was texting you like one in the morning all these different thoughts that I had. Yep. Um... We didn't include this in our list, but I was just talking about how uh, Dooku was kind of a true Sith towards the end, you know, that... Holding it down for the dark side. Down. He knew that uh, he was about to be replaced by Anakin, and he didn't, you know, blow the whistle on Palpatine right in front of everybody. Right. Because he recognized that he had been beaten, he didn't deserve to live. Very Sith Very move. Sith. Very Sith. I like that a lot. So, before we get started, any news? Uh, yeah. So, Thrawn... <laughs> The new prequel, yes, Ascendancy, Ascendancy trilogy. Uh, the first book gets released next month, which I'm super, which I'm super excited about. <laughs> okay, I see you. I think it comes out September. I'll look up the date. I remember it's really close to my birthday. I was gonna say I think it's the maybe the fifth. Yeah, really close to my birthday. <laughs> okay, keep going. Uh, and that's all I've got off the top of my head. <laughs> News we've told you, but it's still coming. Um, let's see. September 1st. September 1st. Wow. That's a good day. So that is a... Oh, that's kind of cool. 9-1. 9-1. 9-1. Um, yeah. I'm doing something right now, so that will be the day that I can undo that. What? I'm doing my best not to buy any Star Wars memorabilia. I guess oh. books doesn't really count, but like... Figures yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, so think about that. Uh, check this out. I actually asked you because you always spring on me. I do have some news. I was just messing with you. I know. Um, but I had that little nugget. That was good. Tucked away just in case. Yeah. What's today? The um, today's the fourteenth. This will air on the seventeenth, and so you'll be just about two weeks away from the new Thrawn book. There have been excerpts that have been released on which Vine, I have not read, but neither one of us have read or listened to it because we're trying to. I just want to. I want to go in there. Yeah, guns are blazing. Yeah. So, anyways, I started blasting. Oh, here's the cool news: Mark Thompson, the guy that reads all the Star Wars. Oh yeah, he accepted audiobooks, your friend request on Facebook. Accepted my friend request on Facebook. So, funny. hey, what if we can get him on the show? I'm just saying. That'd be sick. that would be sick. Um, okay, here's a cool thing: uh, Lego Star Wars Holiday Special. Coming to Disney Plus. So the holiday special that's kind of like the weird Christmas thing from 42 years ago, 1978. They're making a Lego version of They're it? They're making a Lego version of the holiday special. And it, I don't think that it's going to be like basically a remake, but it's going to pay homage to it. And it comes out uh, this December on Disney Plus. That's brilliant. And it's going to be... It's going to be great because everything Lego does is great. Yeah. Lego humor is some of the best. And Lego Star Wars humor is really good. Yeah. Um... Probably the best all-time Star Wars like material joke would have been the Watto selling the red flags red on Tatooine. Hilarious. Yeah. Um, so it's going to be 45 minutes long. 
Okay, yeah. That's uh, nice. It says they wanted to give a wink and a nod to the original and that it was inspired by beloved holiday movies like It's a Wonderful Life, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, oh and Christmas God. Vacation. Oh my God, I love all those movies. Three hilarious that's movies. That's the, that's pretty much the... Um, those are some of the greatest movies I've ever seen. That's the, that's the trilogy of best Christmas movies. Yeah. It's up there for sure. Um, it says the story Isn't will take place... Steve Martin trying to get home for Thanksgiving? Yes. But it's considered a holiday movie, which I guess... It's not a Christmas movie, but it's a holiday movie. Yeah. The story will take place after last year's Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker. And when it comes to the plot, here's what we know. Okay, so here's kind of like the setup. Uh, this is coming from StarWarsNewsNet.com. So if you're watching... Is this going to be canon or is this just going to be like a... What um, sort of thing? I'm not sure. That would be so weird. That would be funny if this was canon. Uh, they have the Freemaker Adventures that have come out, and they are on Disney+, Plus, and I don't think they count those as canon. Okay. Um, kind of like things before where it's like, red flag, like that's not canon. Right. There's also the thing where... Um, well, I, don't, I didn't consider the Lego Star Wars games red flags canon. Right. That's yeah. what I'm saying is this is probably just going to be for fun season. Okay. Um, but it is coming directly to Disney+, Plus, so you never know. They could be like, this counts. Oh, my God. Um, but remember at the beginning you have this moment where Vader already in costume and Emperor already as burnt up Emperor is on a Star Destroyer or something and the door opens and it's Darth Maul and they start playing Duel of the Fates. The bum, bum, and he's like, awesome, awesome. And every time he says it, the lightsaber comes on more and he goes, I'm so, and like third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and it turns into like a Swiss Army knife of lightsabers. He's like, so awesome. And he's in his episode one outfit, so stuff like that that doesn't jive with the key, with the timeline. Right. So I, I imagine it'll be something like that. It says Ray and Droid Pal BB-8 head off on a quest to gain a deeper knowledge of the Force, but their visit to a mysterious Jedi temple sends them careening through time and space. Ray interacts with Luke Skywalker, Darth Vader, Obi Wan Kenobi, Yoda, and other characters in some of the franchise's most beloved moments as they try to return in time for a Life Day feast with her friends on Chewbacca's Wookiee homeworld of Kashyyyk. Now, that's very cool because Life Day was first um, introduced in the holiday special, and there's this awkward moment where they're having, basically, it's Christmas, but for Star Wars, and it's on Kashyyyk, it's a Wookiee holiday, and Chewbacca, who's, you know, at the time, Peter Mayhew, seven foot three, in this huge costume, and he's just wearing this red robe, and it's more like a poncho, and it's, so it's just real awkward because he's just, like, standing there with freaking this red curtain over him and he's like oh like it's just a funny i like the holiday special because i like the quirkiness of it um but yeah so life day that's what that is and then when you used to play um star wars renegade squadron which was just for the psp just remember when it had the cool darth oh, vader I remember. psp I remember. um you used to have like events and i'm terrible at video games for those of you who don't know me personally um i'm just we didn't play them for a long time growing up and then when I was in college, I didn't really get into it. When you were in college, you got more and more into video games. So you're like a regular now, but I've just, I've always really been bad at it, except for Star Wars Battlefront games. I love those. Um, so I remember having the Renegade Squadron for the PSP, and I wanted to get 100% completion on like every medal you could get. And there were some that you could only get by playing an ad hoc game um, on Life Day, which is December 25th, or on. Um, jubilation day or indoor day or something like that and that was july 4th and i would go in and change the date on my on PSP, psp go and you know get 10 kills in an ad hoc game and then really get the medal change the date to july 4th so like go in and just get all the medals done so life day is a cool that's just a little personal reference for me but yeah there's some news so that was released i think uh earlier this week cool and uh so that's really cool i love the lego star wars stuff of course the lego star wars complete saga game comes out either it's already out or it's coming out soon and that's going to be a lot of fun it's gonna be sweet lego star wars is the, is the thing well there he is if you weren't wondering the guy's mowing the lawn today but we're just gonna power through because we have some really good things to get to so today we're talking about 10 things we love. I would love well, your mother-in-law. Uh, 10 things that we love you about... You love your mother-in-law. Yeah, I do. Oh my God. He admitted it. He admitted it. Um, so we're talking about three or 10 things we love about episode three, Revenge of the Sith. 
And uh, this is in no way, shape, or form saying that these are the 10 best things. These are 10 things that we love. And uh, I, would, I would personally like it if you're watching on YouTube or if you uh, are part of our following on Instagram. Uh, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel. And if there's something you love about Revenge of the Sith that we failed to mention, uh, we'd love for you to comment on our YouTube video or on our Instagram post about this episode. Yeah. And without further ado, we're going to get into maybe the best Star Wars movie of all time. Controversially, it's probably like my favorite movie. It's it's the most rewatchable film for me. Really? I could watch this movie infinite times. Yep. No hate to anything else, but episode three is where it's at. Sticking with us. All right, number one. This is this could be the best thing about it, honestly. Um, but the soundtrack, the John soundtrack, Williams. John Williams, masterstroke. And you know what? If you're John Williams and you think this is at the time you're thinking this that is the last, the last one. one, and I really think that maybe this is his best work. He put his heart on the line because you have obviously you have the thought out there, the mindset that the best one is probably. The uh, the original New Hope because that's the original yeah. introduction of I mean, the Star the, Wars theme and all that stuff. Yeah, but I, here's the thing: is you don't get Vader the Imperial March. I don't think you get that until Empire, right? Yeah, I think that's correct. So that's probably one of, if not the most iconic wah, Star Wars. Wah, wah, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. yeah, I would say that's that's um, Star Destroyer theme kind of. Chasing the Falcon, that kind of thing. Yeah, I think that that's probably one of the most iconic Star Wars tracks. Yep, for sure. But uh, I'm, well, and then you got, you know, the Duel of the Fates. Yep. Man. From Phantom Menace. A lot of people, that's their favorite. It's is Duel of the Fates. It's iconic, bro. Um. Yeah, it's kind of a disservice to say that any one movie is the best sound because they all have such great things yeah. in them. Um. I remember when I first went and saw, well, you were with me when I saw Force Awakens, when Kylo's shuttle descends and he goes, boom, 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 boom. I believe the name of that track is Kylo Ren Enters Battle. I was... I think in parentheses is Kylo's theme. Yeah. Kylo Ren arrives at the battle. That's what it is. Oh. Dude. Which that's a obviously sick one. we like because I put it in our theme it's song. It's in the theme. Um, so, yeah, the soundtrack. Uh, some of my favorite things about the soundtrack are. Uh, when I first think of, like for instance, obviously the original, the the before the remake of Star Wars Battlefront Two, I loved the original Battlefront Two that came out right as Revenge of the Sith was hitting theaters. Yeah, that would have been the Battlefront Two two thousand five. Right, and as soon as you turn it in, and it, you know your console's on, and you hit the menu, and it goes. I ran out of breath. I would have kept going. <laughs> but that's uh, Battle of the Heroes, I believe. And whew, that one gets me. And if you listen to Star Wars audiobooks, they'll put some of those tracks in there, too. It's and, awesome. Ooh, get you right in I the I like feelings. the sound effects. I also like... I'm listening to uh, Scoundrels right now by Tim Zahn. And uh, I like when Chewie talks. And they're like... But I also like that you can tell they've got like a soundboard. There's like maybe eight sounds. Right. And sometimes they're trying to shake it up, so it'll be like, hur, hur, hur. <laughs> you know, like it's just like <laughs> they they're... just click through back to back yeah. to back. Uh, like I love it when you can totally other. tell it's Cloud City Chewie that goes, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Uh, he's like, the sirens are going, and it's yeah. like, woo, 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 and he's like shaking the ceiling. <laughs> like, Please, for the love of God. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, soundtrack is a one. Yeah. Um, is there a soundtrack that's great, your great a soundtrack? A great soundtrack that's not whiff out the window while I'm driving. While I'm driving. What's your favorite um, song from Revenge of the Sith? All of it. All of them? Probably. I mean, Battle if of the we're Heroes. Being, yeah, if we're being honest, Battle of the Heroes is 
It's the most iconic episode. And remember the when they're on Mustafar and it's like, hmm, 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 hmm. It's just like, it's just a heightened, really paranoid version of the original soundtrack. Have you ever seen, I'm, I'm sure you have, but like when they're recording the score and they've got, you know, the final cut of all the scenes in the background. And right. John Williams is accenting the music that he's written specifically to match what's happening on screen. Yeah, because he has a he has a theme. Right. But yeah, um, some of that is the br- done... the beauty of a composer yeah. of a director is because he's got the bra ba 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 you know, but then it's Anakin and Obi Wan and they're like swinging by like hey you hey you hey you and he's like. Yeah, yeah. Watching them live is just lovely. Yeah, it's incredible. Just as a as a composer, as a conductor. Do you think that they see the movie after there's like effects and stuff too, or do you think it's green screen stuff? Uh, maybe just. From a, what I remember, it looks like. Maybe it's pretty, not 100 percent done, but well, because it's got to be the it's got to be what's going to be up there, or else it won't match up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe, like, little bitty details are added later, but, like, the green screen's been changed Yeah, like, to... I don't know if the Foley artists have had their thing where they're putting the sound effects and everything in right, there, Right, right, right. But... Oh, man. We um, could do a whole episode about Star Wars Foley artists. Dude. Which, basically, has just been Burt. Just making... Dude. Him... Oh, my God. We can't even talk about that. I'll just... I'll go off for, like, 20 minutes. But, yeah, John Williams... Star Wars wouldn't be Star Wars without John Williams. Nope. I think everybody can agree on that. And we kind of have Steven Spielberg to thank for that because... George Lucas really enjoyed the soundtrack from Jaws, and Spielberg said, oh, dude, that's my guy John Williams. I'll hook yeah. you up. Man. And don't forget, Michael Giacchino from Rogue One was fantastic as well. It's not but John Williams. Not John Williams. Not John Williams. Um, okay, number two. This is probably the best thing from Revenge of the Sith, but we just were listing things as we went, and it was going to be way too hard to... to number them least of yeah, best. Yeah, just I was like, hey, do you want to rank these? And I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> I was like, that's going to be way too difficult. We're going to be here till Christmas. Um, so soundtrack is number one. Number two, not number two, but the second yeah. thing on the list. Chronologically in our minds. The yeah. dynamic. Between Anakin and Obi-Wan. Between Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, this is where you really see, I think, the friendship that you can see behind Obi-Wan's eyes in A New Hope. You know, you can tell there's a clear friendship, a clear evidence of having gone into battle together and relied on each other when Ben's telling Luke about, you know, the Clone Wars and about how they fought with each other. And in episode two, even, you really just see Obi-Wan is kind of like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? He was just really on he's just kind of like, case. Yeah, he's... Always. He has not... You gotta remember that Obi-Wan didn't want to train Anakin. Well, there's that, and then also Anakin's already, like, super cocky, you know, like, way too big for his britches. Yeah. And Obi-Wan's got to continue to train him and help him grow in skill while also be like, hey, don't, don't, don't be a wiener. Yeah. You know? Well, there's that, there's the game. Even when Obi-Wan's complimenting Anakin in episode two, he's also, like, backhanding him. So he's Nice like, shot, my young yeah. Padawan. Good call, my young Padawan. Yeah. Good call, dummy. Yeah. He, uh, in the Gindy Clone Wars, That's the original... That's a pretty good thought for an idiot to have. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, the original Clone Wars, the 2D Cartoon Network version, you've got Anakin that's like, I am the best pilot in the, in the order, and he's like, you will learn your place. So... You see them having grown through that. Right. To where they're, it's more, I mean, they're not Padawan Master anymore. So it's Jedi Knight, Jedi Master. Mm-hmm. You know, they're, it's more of a friendly, there's a camaraderie, yeah, there's a trust. And their friendship has grown so strongly that pretty much anywhere they go, they're like, all right, we're sending both of them. Like really, they're, they work together more often than not. Right. Especially in the movies. Right. Um, so their whole dynamic, um, the scene, the movie opens and Obi-Wan's like, oh, I see. It's going to be easy. Like yeah. he's, he's not a, a fan of flying. Obi-Wan's got his, you know, well-timed, but also terribly timed jokes. Mm-hmm. I love him for it. Uh, and then you've got, you know, Anakin's like super stoked about, uh, fighting. You see like the juxtaposition of Obi-Wan. He's like, all right, uh. Toss the junk out the back, and, and yeah. Anakin's like, "All right, how fast can I spin?" Yeah, you know, that's it's a good also trick. interesting because 
you see the clones get hurt or they're they're basically mm-hmm. doomed to die um and it's oddball who yeah. they really develop in clone wars which where it hurts cool. which is cool yeah and um you have that moment where anakin goes i'm gonna help him we're gonna help him and obi-wan says they're doing their job we must do ours yeah and uh it's interesting because that shows you the strength of anakin's empathy mm-hmm. which when out of control is really what cost him in the end right So it's just an interesting relationship that you just see throughout the whole movie. Right, right. And there's just so many angles you could analyze that, even at the same time where you're thinking Anakin's way closer to the Chancellor, and their whole point right now is to rescue the Chancellor, and Anakin's about to put all that on hold just to save this clone. Mm -hmm. You know. um, And it's interesting because then you have later on in the movie, Anakin is put on the council, but he's not made a master, and he's mm -hmm. super mad. Yeah. And Obi-Wan's really the only person that can go, hey, you idiot. Yeah. You've been given a great honor. Yeah. And at the same time, he comes along him alongside Anakin a lot more gently. Yeah. Then You can see it's interesting because, yeah, Anakin has grown a lot. But you also see the growth of Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan as a mentor. Yeah. You and know, as the a... way that he learns how to handle Anakin better. Mm-hmm. You'll be made a master in time. Yeah. And, uh... Just Man. that confident reassurance. I just wish there was like a what if movie that they made if Anakin stayed light. I would love to see. I guess eventually, basically it would be a bunch of peace. So not a very good movie probably. It will be... What was I saying? Good. <laughs> I need to poop. <laughs> He's, do you think he was just thinking of that? Like, what's a good word? What's a good word? Blah, 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 blah. Well, what's interesting is that he, Vader, as far as we know from, I mean, I guess it's all legends now, but all the rest of the Sith got to pick their name. Yeah. Not Vader. Nope. Assigned. Assigned seating. Um, okay. That sucks. So Anakin Obi-Wan, we could go on forever, but we'll move on. Um, and we'll come back. There are other... These, obviously, it's all in the same movie, so there are Venn diagrams throughout the list that overlap of, again with the Anakin and Obi-Wan. Um, number again with three. This? Again with this? Number three, Grievous. Yeah, this was your size one. Take it away. <sighs> Not that I don't like Grievous, obviously. He's a coward and he will run and hide, as he always does. But... As he always does. Yeah. Um, okay, here's my thing. Grievous is super dope. And I know that he's kind of a weenie, and he runs and he hides, as he will always do, but that's my <laughs> that's my audible Lando slash Mace Windu. Um, but there's Mark just... Mark Thompson's like, it's basically the same person. The, the uh, <laughs> just, I remember the hype leading up to Revenge of the Sith, and I was he like... He was the original Phasma. I was like, don't care. But I guess, I don't know, Grievous was like way less whoa, underwhelming. Whoa, yeah, 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 yeah. Way less underwhelming. Um, and also watching the Clone Wars leading up to episode three on Cartoon Network. And I was like, you know, Kaidi Money is like, he is unstoppable. He is unstoppable. Dude, General Grievous is the man. Well, I mean, he's the Kalish, whatever. Um, I love the complication of his story, but where, uh, you know, again, this is, I guess this is legends now, but whatever, it's all real. Um, the thing where he's a warlord, he's a Kalish warlord. And he's basically fighting for the freedom of his people. Count Dooku puts a bomb on his ship. But just enough of a bomb that he survives. I don't know how that works. But he... Just his vital organs and his eyeballs. Yeah. And he basically... General Grievous is a freedom fighter. And Count Dooku puts a bomb on his ship. And then when he drags him out of the wreckage, he tells him, the Jedi did this to you because they don't want you, you know, stirring up the pot. Mm Mm-hmm. And ever since then, Dooku. Grievous just has a freaking a vendetta against the Jedi. And I love his just desire for vengeance. I don't think he really cares about the Separatists. He doesn't care about the droids. He hates the droids. But whatever he has to do to lead the Separatists, he has a respect for Dooku. He has a super respect for Palpatine or Sidious. And he just wants as many Jedi to die as he possibly can. He yeah. doesn't care about anything else. Um, My biggest hang-up for Grievous has always been that as soon as anyone ever uses the Force... Tied to abandon ship. 
Grievous is boned. Yeah, it's like, true. Anakin or Obi Wan just force pushes him to Timbuk two. Yeah. I don't understand why more Jedi don't just do that. I think it's because of the intimidation factor. And I think if he I was knows intimidated, that. I would use the force a hundred percent more. I think that he knows that he can get in people's brains, and so he uh it just I don't know. There's so much that kind of shows the falling away of the Jedi. They don't yeah. trust in the force. And so Grievous, like that whole thing where him and Obi-Wan are about to fight and he stands up to his full like seven and a half feet tall thing and he takes his cape off with his cool cross arms like that and then he undoes two arms into four arms and he has a lightsaber each of and then he has his wrist rotating. That's all a show of like, you know, I'm going to get you. And I think that that feeling of fear overwhelms most most lower Jedi. Um, not my boy Obi Wan though. Not Obi Wan. I like that he's like, huh? Oh, what an interesting challenge. Yeah, he looks and he's like, ooh, this is this is weird. Um, in the Clone War cartoons, the reason that Grievous has a cough is because Mace Windu. Um, he's, he's got the, the Chancellor and he's about to leave, and Windu gets on the scene right as Grievous is about to leave. Yeah. And and we all knew Grievous Windu. goes and he does the whole intimidating. I've got four lightsabers thing and. It, Mace Windu's like, I screw that noise and does like this and makes a crunching sound. Can we talk about how cool Windu was in the Cartoon Network? Oh, like, dude. Clone Wars series. When he's like... And then yeah. he does the whole... Oh, I thought it was cool when he daggum uh, was like just unscrewing all the screws in the robots with mm-hmm. the Force. That's freaking sick. Very smart. I thought that the use of the Force in the original, in the original Clone Wars, Wars... was way cooler. Was off It's the a lot charts. more imaginative. It's, yeah, it's very, very imaginative. You can tell it's somebody who grew up watching Star Wars because they're like, I would do this as a Jedi. Mm -hmm. You know. Also, somebody who grew up watching Cartoon Network because Shaggy from Scooby Doo made an appearance. Right. Shaggy. Um, And yeah, it's interesting. I think that they dialed back the the abilities in the Force for the real Clone Wars because they realized this is too strong. Yeah, they didn't want to have that big of a departure from the But Grievous, yeah, getting back to Grievous, I just thought he was so cool. Here's a funny story. I was so enamored by Grievous that, um, you know, growing up, even though that we had the means to get whatever toys we wanted, our parents still did a good job of, like, we couldn't just have everything, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I can remember wanting a General Grievous toy, but uh, I would see one and be like, well, not today, oh, not today, not today, and I was kind of, you know, whatever. So... I remember it was my mom's birthday, or no, it was Mother's Day. It was Mother's Day because Revenge of the Sith was just coming, about to come out or had already come out or whatever. And so our dad had taken us to the mall to find presents for my mom. And uh, and so I was like, I wonder if she would like something from KB Toys. So I went to KB Toys and I found General Grievous and I was like, she would love this. So I got it for her and she was like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. And I was like, mm-hmm, you're welcome. And she was like, I don't really know what this is. He looks kind of yucky. And I was like, he's very cool. He's very cool. And she's like, do you want it? And I was like, are you sure? And I was like, if you want, it's for you. And she's like, it would make me happier if you had it. And I was like, well, that's two of us. <laughs> so I got my mom a General Grievous action figure for Mother's Day. Are we all going to pretend like that wasn't the plan from the get-go? But she just give it back? Yeah, to that was the idea. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You think Dad knew? <laughs> I don't know, but I can remember work uh, being there in the was computer just one lab. More step. On I can the marathon that was the journey to their divorce. <laughs> I remember being uh, in uh, whatever grade I was in when Revenge of the Sith came out, and we had computer lab. And every day they'd be like, "Guys, I cannot tell you enough. Stop changing the backgrounds to your computer." And if you do change it, please change it back to the regular blue before you leave the computer lab. And I'd be like, General Grievous, HD pictures, Google Images. And I would put up a picture of General Grievous for my background. And then I would just log out and be like, you're welcome, whoever is after me. Um, so yeah, Grievous just has a special place in my heart. I used to, uh, I was a teaching assistant when I went to college. And whenever I would teach, I would change the background in a lecture hall in a major four-year university and so whoever came in there there was a background in one of the rooms that i taught in it was like a moose for like a month and every time <laughs> i go in there i go in there for like a different class i was like surely they've changed it back by now yeah 
And it was completely different class, and whoever was teaching would log in, and it would be a moose, and I'd be like, <laughs> you're just over there secretly <laughs> dying because it's a freaking moose on the screen. Yeah, nothing inappropriate, but you just had a little bit of control. Yeah. That's funny. So General Grievous is cool to me, more to me than to you. And I do agree I that I think he's, he's cool. I just think that the Jedi should be more well-equipped to handle him. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Uh, so Grievous. Uh, next, Anakin's fall to the dark side. Super important. We all know it was coming because Anakin becomes Darth Vader. Darth Vader is the main villain for all of the original trilogy. Right. Um, and I know Palpatine's in control, but Vader's the one. Vader's the one we were all focused on. Um, so, yeah, it was just... That was a, almost a singularly important aspect of Revenge of the Sith was Anakin's fall. I mean, we've been working up towards it from The Phantom Menace. Mm-hmm. Um, well, it was also really interesting because you... It's interesting because you know the source material... Um, you know where we need to go, mm-hmm. but it takes a certain amount of skill to deliver on that mm-hmm. because it's kind of like um, if it's it's similar to if there's just an open ended you know whatever you want to do set you know Star Wars episodes seven eight and nine just do mm-hmm. what you want and um, you know you can be as creative or imaginative or take the story wherever you want and that's fine but I think it takes an interesting and very specific sort of mind to go, okay, here's where Vader ends up. How does he get there? Right. And then you create episode one where he's this little kid that's like, are you an angel? Yeah. And it's like, how do we take this sweet kid that literally would consider rather being a... Like, he wanted to stay with his mom. And his mom said, it's better for you to go. So he's so sweet and so selfless and so kind, he'd rather continue being a slave to not leave his mom on Tatooine. And you're going to create... Right. The, the worst person ever well, out of him. And the other challenge is that you had to create somebody who was good enough that the whole Jedi Order would place their faith in him. Mm-hmm. You know, and then still take that person and make a believable change mm-hmm. to the dark side. Mm-hmm. So, so all you, of it, I think, and I know everybody in the world has their complaints about the prequel trilogy, but I think it was masterfully done. Yeah, I thought it was really good. And I think that um, it would be interesting because you have the... Um, you have Anakin at the beginning that's he's fighting Dooku pretty much by himself. And uh, you sent a funny meme the other day where it was Dooku going, you have hate, you have anger, but you don't use them. And then it's a meme of Hagrid from Harry Potter going, I shouldn't have said that. I should not have said that. And that really got me good because right after that, Anakin's like, okay. He's like, oh, good point. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so he starts going at him. And even then, like, cutting off the hands, that's all part of battle. Mm-hmm. And he says, you know, good, Anakin, good. Yeah. I mean, this is the figurehead of the entire Civil War. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, and Anakin's saying, I, I shouldn't do it. It's yeah. not the Jedi way. And he says, he's too dangerous to be left alive. And so he kills him, and he gives into the dark, but I don't think he... he at the time, he doesn't realize he's given into the dark, because he doesn't know who Sidious is. Mm-hmm. And so... That whole starting of, um, in this moment, I know what's the right thing, but I also know what I want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And going that way. Um, and then throughout the movie, the the part I was telling you earlier, the part that gets me on, on a, like, every time I watch it basis, is when he's, uh, he's in the Jedi Temple, and he basically knows that Mace and the other guys are going to get... Palpatine, Mm -hmm. and he wants to be there, and he is looking off into the sunset, and just like these tears, one at a time, out of one eye, are coming down, and you hear that, oh man, that gets me. Also, um, a little bit of a side note, in the Legacy of the Force book series, uh, in the audio version... Uh, the story of Jason Solo and Anakin Skywalker are very, very similar. And as Jason is starting to fall and have these conversations within himself of like what he can do, what he should do, what's right, what would cost him, but what's best for the galaxy, uh, similar things to what Anakin's thinking, they have that soundtrack going. 
And so as you're listening to it, you're like, oh my God, don't do it, Jason. This is what Anakin, this is what your grandfather did. It was a mistake. Um, so that soundtrack is very cool. Uh, but just that decision, like knowing that Palpatine is a Sith, but it takes whatever it takes to save Padme. And it's just, it's so tragic, but it's so good. It sucks. Um, but yeah, Anakin's fall to the dark side. Thoughts? I mean, you know, kind of already <laughs> unpacked it. Okay, you take it you take the next one. You take the next one. Order sixty six. Oh, okay, you take it. Uh, no, uh, when I think of Order sixty six, I think one of the funniest bits to me is that Obi Wan has survived. He's free climbed all the way back up to the tenth level. Right. And he's using Grievous's bomber. Also, Grievous's ashy remains are still there. Nobody's moved him. And he's, you know, finally he made it out. He's in space and he's like, hey, my clones turned on me. You know, like, he's <laughs> yeah. just like... He's flying in Grievous' bomber. In Grievous' bomber and then he just says it so casually. He's like, hey, clones turned, need help. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Yeah. Dude, how sad is it when you're Cody like... Cody shot me. <laughs> Stop. You're like, oh, God, who can I even call? Right? I've been calling these clone troopers every day. Bail again? Yeah, what are you? Well, what are y'all doing? <laughs> well, heck, what are y'all doing? Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, I get, and that's always puzzled me as well. I was like, why is everybody interested in Bail all of a sudden? Right? I'm pooping. <laughs> He's on the toilet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the one thing that I would, I understand the concept, but with modern technology and just whatever if i could have a golden ticket and redo any scene from revenge of the sith it would be order 66 yeah i think simply just because we understand how powerful um jedi are in the force now and we understand their some of the, more of the capabilities um and things like that just specifically the one that comes to mind is ala sakura Who's walking through, I want to say, um, she's on uh, Felucia. Felucia, and she's walking, and whoever acted as her, she should have not gotten the gig, because she's walking, bless her heart, if you're out there and you're watching this, I'm so sorry, but she's walking, and it's like, oh, it's just, I don't know, I just feel like, you know, I don't know. They should have had some sort of premonition. Maybe a premonition of some kind, or just double vision. some double vision. Maybe some kind of, just put up a better fight. You know what I mean? I thought that the way that they did Coyote Mundi's scene was very good because he's like, you know, come on. He turns My around. My boy Flo Koon got shafted. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Um, Which at the time I was like, who's this witch? But now I'm really attached to Flo and I'm like, oh, Yeah, I know. Flo Koon. Yeah. The heartlessness with which the clones are like, got it. Um, so like the ones like Plo Koon, the ships fall back out of frame and the ships are flying so fast and the way that they pull back and the firing, like that's one thing. Or the way that, uh, I think it's Adi Galia and they pull back and mm-hmm. they shoot at her with a speeder. That's one thing. But when it's like, mm-hmm. man, it's muggy out here, right guys? <clears throat> guys? Oh! Good thing I like, wore my tube top! Yeah, exactly. Like I thought Caddy Mundy's was good. Because he turns... So and... specifically, Ayla Sakura's death, you would redo. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would like to see more Jedi, like, just... The way that we saw Obi-Wan and Yoda fighting the clones, I would like to have seen more fight back before the fall. Because I get it, like, even Kaidi Mundi, a Jedi Master, obviously a great, you know, swordsman and things. Right. He deflects a couple of bolts, but when you have 50 people shooting at you... Right. And they're just on, like... All right, I'm going to go ahead and switch to automatic. Right. Like, that, I get that. But um, I would have liked to see more fight back. Or it would have been cool to see, you know, they went ahead and mentioned Quinlan Voss. Mm-hmm. How cool would it have been to have him on Boss Pity or wherever he is at the time. Yeah. Fights think, back, escapes. It would have been cool to see a, a singular Jedi escape. I think it would have just I guess that's the what, narrative too much. At yeah. the time, you know. Yeah, that's true. We do get to see Obi Wan and Yoda escape, so I guess. That's and those not... are the ones we needed to see, and then I feel like the rest would have just muddied the waters too much. Yeah, that's true. I guess I would have liked to see then maybe more, just 
that carried out longer, more screen time for that that event. It was so uh, an astronomical event, but it is one of the best things about it. Just yep. seeing the wide, it's a that moment in that movie is a culmination of, you know, how long was Bane before episode three? Like a thousand years or something like yeah. that. I mean, just to see that, that's the. This is the birth of the plan. Yeah. This is the fruit of your labor. Yeah. And it went exactly according to plan. It was masterful. Just lovely. Lovely, uh, lovely, lovely. So that was a good one. Um, I really enjoyed that. Good one. Good one. Um, yeah. My, my clown troopers turned on me. That's really funny. That's, I think about that all the time. I'm so tired today. Uh, I think it would have been funny to... Uh, not funny, but when I think of that, someone can make a meme of Obi Wan going through, and it's like, wah, 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 wah. and it's just all the Jedi's dead, dead, dead from the Incredibles. Because <laughs> that's how it is. That's how it is. Eliminated. Eliminated. Um, okay, the next one. This. Uh, I'll talk a little bit, and then I'll let you take it because it's one of your favorite points. Okay. Uh, Palpatine versus anyone. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Um, so it's very cool because in episode six, we meet Palpatine, um, but... Hold on, my dog's doing things. Keep talking. When, uh, when Palpatine is in episode six, you meet him, he's already this old man, and he's already wrinkly, and he's like... He does do the forced lightning thing, which is super cool, uh, but you don't have the moment of, how strong is this guy? And I think that when you're watching episode three, uh, you still to this point, obviously we've seen Yoda fight in episode two already. We've seen a bunch of Jedi fighting already. So you know that there's the capability there to finally see Palpatine show out. But in that moment where you have uh, them entering the Senate, or not the Senate chamber, but Palpatine's you know, office. Um, also, I love that his chair from episode six is in there. Palpatine likes what Palpatine likes. So that's cool. And uh, I like whenever he gets there and you have this moment where... Now here, I guess, here's another moment I would refilm somehow. But uh, the fight in the office between... Before it's just him and Mace. Yeah. And as a hardcore fan, I'm like, well, if you would read the novelization, you understand that he employs right, a right, force right. scream which completely debilitates anyone in the vicinity. <laughs> but, uh... That's what that sounds like, I guess. Yeah. Is that on the soundboard? And um, if it's not, we need to get it on there. No, it's not. Um, but you have this moment where it's, you know... He does that sick Friggin' parallel to the ground, 720. Yeah. Real tight maneuver. And also, can we talk about the fact that in the Clone Wars, he has a dose of lightsabers. And in episode three, he's like, these frickin' Jedi, you frickin' fricks! And so he decides, I guess I'll take out one lightsaber and pwn these guys. That's freaking dope! It's pretty ballin'. Yeah, I I know that, and... uh, Man, I'm, I'm I'm sleepy, so I'm losing his name today. But the actor who played Palpatine didn't really Ian want, McDermott. Ian McDermott didn't want to be responsible for carrying the weight of dueling as Palpatine because right. he knew that he wouldn't be able to do it justice. Yeah, I thought that was. I love it when you see an actor really take on the character. Right. Well, and he's been he's maybe the only I guess the guy that played C three PO Anthony Daniels. Yeah, I think Kenny Baker was still around. R two D two guy. And maybe Peter Mayhew played Chewbacca in episode three. But you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like he's the only one who had ownership of an, like a main character from the original trilogy that right. would have, you know, had that big attachment, you know, all right. the way through the prequel trilogy. Well, I well. think also it shows how much he loves the story and loves the character mm-hmm. because he, I don't know if this is the behind the scenes from Revenge of the Sith or if I read an interview or what, but there's a part where he's like, I don't want to do this. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he gives it everything he's got, and I don't think anybody could do the facial expressions like him. Like the... Yeah. <laughs> the toothless <laughs> look. Yeah, he makes some cool faces. Yeah. Um, but, so for those of you who are haters, and all you watch is the movies, and you're like, that part sucks. Blah, 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 blah. What happens is, <laughs> let me just explain. Um, when they come into the room, first of all, how ballin' is it that just... 
he's just looking at the Death Star when yeah, they come to the office. I also like that he's so casual about it. He's like, ah, you'll hear sooner than expected. Yeah. He knows what's about to happen. Yeah. And he's just playing politics. That's that's Palpatine right there. Um, and I have to imagine, um, you know, when you watch a professional that's the best in the world do what they do, they love the big moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, you know, you, if you're a, if you're a fighter or if you're a pro athlete or whatever, like when that moment comes, you're not the greats are ready for that moment. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And that's the whole argument LeBron versus Michael Jordan is, well, LeBron's lost in the finals before because that's the stage of stages. Yeah. And so it's interesting because, dude, you got four Jedi masters that walk into the room and you're like, oh, good God. You know, that's not what he thinks. He just, first of all, he's like, I don't know. It's the equivalent he's of... He's still in character. Yeah. That's it's the, the equ- cool It's bit. the equivalent of... You're, you know, your parents are coming to the room and you're still watching something naughty anyway, and you're like, Yes, mother. Like, he just turns around so casually, and then he goes, Ah. And then when he goes, (laughs) Dot Butler. Whenever Mace Windu goes, You know, Supreme Chancellor Palpatine, you're being arrested for treason against the Republic, the Senate will decide your fate. And he goes, I am the Senate. You see his, like, he is ready to go. Yeah. And, um... Mace is in there, too. He's like, not yet. Yeah. Which it's like, ah, good one. You know, <laughs> but at the same time, it's the best he's got. He wasn't ready for this. Right. And so when he, he does wake that, up this morning and think he was going to fight the Sith, lol. Yeah, when he goes, bing, and he has it, and he goes, it's treason, then. Yeah. I was like, oh, Pretty shizzle. Go. I remember being in whatever, like I said, probably sixth grade, and I remember being like, <laughs> Like we you've never finally, seen him do anything before. We were finally gonna see exactly. We were finally I mean, gonna see Palpatine do something. But... Yeah. Well, the thing is, in Episode Six, like, look, I, I've been since I was six years old. <laughs> like, I've been a Star Wars fan my whole life. So when in, in Episode Six, when he's like, like he's 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 not even tapped in yet. Right. You know what I mean? So when he's like, and he's got the lightsaber in his hand, I was thinking. Oh my god. Because well, we have this knowledge that he's this like... This is what sex feels like <laughs> as a sixth grader. <laughs> we have the knowledge that he's like the most powerful being in the galaxy and we never get to see him do anything. Yeah. And so for those of you... I, I say all that to say. For those of you who are like, yeah, well, it's kind of late you now. He kills all those guys so fast. Listen here, you cretin. Uh, first of all, he employs oh. a force ability called Force Scream. And so when you're like, oh, that's... That, corkscrew sound it's not because he's excited it's because he's employing a force ability which basically is like a flashbang in the force and mace windu is the only jedi master that's strong enough in the room to be like whoa what's happening here everybody else is like ding (laughs) and he's just like gotcha 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 poor kid fisto's like you know he's the guy that rode the bull for three three seconds he's like oh oh dead um, so that's just super sick. And if, if you, you watch read... Space Force, it's kind of like that scene where, uh, Steve Carell's character goes and he's popping everybody's balloons with his, <laughs> uh, nail trimmers. I haven't seen It's that. a really out of context thing if you haven't seen it, but that's, it's, it's a really good reference if you have. So nice. I'm drinking it twice. Anyway, uh, back to what I was saying. Oh, Okay. Disregard, huh? You no, don't, I just, I've really been looking forward to this part of the episode. Okay, I would like to say that Samuel very graciously allowed me to take a one word sentence off of our top 10 things because I told him we could include it in this moment. So go ahead. So, I know that the whole force fighting thing is cool. <laughs> the whole, like, just brush it aside. You know, I get the lightsaber. Insignificant <laughs> compared to the power of the dark side. Uh, I don't know why, but probably the most quoted line of the prequel trilogy for me is the post-fight when uh, Mace Windu's been bested, Palpatine knows that he's gotten Anakin over to the dark side, and he just takes a breather, he enjoys himself for a minute, and he says... Ah. <laughs> it's the equivalent of there's a game there's a video game you're playing and there's one level you can't beat 
and you finally do it, and you're like, I'm just gonna have a sandwich now. Yeah. Like, but imagine that for a thousand years. He's just taking a nice breather, and I think that that's the funniest thing in the world. You just ah. ah. You do say that a lot. Such a memeable noise. I don't know. I enjoy it. That's that's way up there on the... So, we were making the list this morning. It's about to happen. I'm like, <laughs> he's going to do it. Yeah. So, I have made a list of a number of things already. <clears throat> and I said, uh, anything you'd like to add that I'm forgetting? And he goes, ah. That was going to be your 11th thing. Um, so... It needed to be on there. But yeah, Palpatine versus anyone. Um, and then, of course, you go into the Yoda versus Palpatine moment. Um, and it's interesting. I think... If they were in a different place, Yoda would have fared better. But those Senate pods, man, they were no joke. Um, I do quite enjoy... The way he's just like laughing maniacally and throwing him. Like, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I really like that a lot. Um, I also like whenever uh, whenever he tries to shoot his lightning at Yoda, and Yoda's the only one that can combat it. And so he's, he's holding it in his hands, and he's basically like... You know, the angle of his incline is getting further and further to 90 degrees, going more towards an obtuse angle, <laughs> like forcing himself down on Palpatine. And you see Palpatine's like laughing, 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 and then he goes, oh, oh, and they like explode apart. I also like that it's a small reference to the Anakin Obi-Wan fight where they're force pushing at the same time and they just blow each other back because neither of them's stronger. Right. It's kind of what happens in the Palpatine Yoda fight. Yoda's absorbed the lightning and then he expels all that force mm -hmm. and they both kind of just, you know, blow it's back. It's very similar to Rey and Kylo trying to pull on the saber at the same time. More importantly, it's like Anakin and Obi-Wan. Yes. <laughs> uh... It was weird in episode 8 whenever they were trying to pull on the saber and they don't stumble back, they just slide. You know? Yeah, it doesn't make sense to me that they're pulling. It's like Force version of the moonwalk. I'm like, what's going on? They're pulling, but they're pushing. We're yeah. crashing. We're crashing. That was a very Christopher Columbus. I'm going to go east by sailing west. Pull on the lightsaber, push your opponent. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, interesting. But yeah, Palpatine versus anyone is very good. Uh, I do love how long it takes Palpatine to tumble out of his chair. Like, guys, it's a movie. You can do as many takes as you want. And they stuck with one where it's like, oh, and you see his boots. That's pretty cool. You see his shoes. Yeah, I do like watching him fall backwards when Yoda force pushes him the first time. And Masamita's like, <laughs> I'll be on my way. He's like, this is, uh, that's my cue. He just puts his headphones in. <laughs> Ice Age joke. Um, okay, this is an interesting one. Uh, I'll kind of let you take the lead on this one. Uh, but Qui-Gon's presence in the Force. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's necessarily one of the coolest things, not one of the most mind-blowing things. Mm -hmm. But it's definitely one of the most important things. One of the most important and most impactful moments right. of the whole saga. Because up until this point, as far as the Jedi knew, what was about to just happen was impossible. Mm -hmm. I also like the walk-up that they have to it in the Clone Wars series where Yoda thinks he might be going crazy because he thinks he's hearing from Qui-Gon in the Force, which he thought was impossible. Which sends Yoda on this whole solo journey. Lost my marbles, have I? Yeah, and I, I like when he... Uh, Gets Anakin to help him because he was saying that defying the council was Anakin's specialty, so he wanted a little help. Yeah, because they have him basically in the Clone Wars, they have him on lockdown because he's having these yeah, he's visions. Basically under house arrest. And they're like, don't go anywhere, okay, little guy? And, you know, Mace is like, it's better for you if you stay here, you know, and all these things. And he's like, uh, Anakin, I need your little help. And he's like, what is it, master? And he's like, defying the council is your specialty. <laughs> Give me the freak out of here. I did like that. Yeah, I, like I liked that. his Jedi Starfighter. That was like a one-seater. I mean, they were all one-seaters if they were the Jedi. Oh, that's true. I just mean that. But it was like the team, you know. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it's, like the. I guess what I mean is. The yellow and red card that every child has. It's like that version of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess what I mean by one-seater is imagine every Jedi Starfighter is a motorcycle and he's just <laughs> driving the sidecar. He's just the sidecar. <laughs> Uh, it's so that like was if really any cool. Any Jedi fighter had an escape pod, that would be Yoda's whole ship. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, and I guess what I mean, what is most important to me about this moment where he says, uh, "An old friend from the Netherworld." I thought that, that just the freaking terminology there was cool. 
Um, but I liked that he was talking about um, in episode four, you know, 20 years later, when Darth Vader is is going to defeat Obi-Wan Kenobi. Mm-hmm. And he says, if you strike me down, I will become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Mm-hmm. There's a moment there... Which definitely became realized when I was playing the Force Unleashed Ultimate Sis Edition extra missions on Tatooine and you fight Ben Kenobi as Starkiller and then you kill him and then you have to fight Force Ghost Ben Kenobi, which sucks. Yeah. Yeah, that game was before its time. Force Ghost doing things in the real world. Yeah. You know? Um, So I thought that was interesting because you have this moment where... Man, we could just do a whole episode about Qui-Gon. Because the thing is... The Jedi have been around for how many years? Ever. You know? Forever. At this point, okay, let's just say, at this point, Legends is still canon, obviously. Right. And there's a there's a book called Dawn of the Jedi Into the Void. And I want to say that that's like maybe 10,000 years before the events of the Battle of Yavin. So, episode four. Um, so, for 10,000 years plus, the Jedi have been around... And there have been, you know, you have up this upcoming series called The High Republic. Mm-hmm. All these new books and kids' books and novels and comics and all this stuff that's talking about the height. The uppity up. The yeah. roaring 20s of the Republic. And Qui-Gon is the one that the Wills chose. This guy knows what's up. Yeah. Let's, let's trust him. Super cool. And he makes it possible for, you know, think about that. Palpatine, for sure, hands down, with beyond the shadow of a doubt, wins the entire saga if Qui-Gon is not trusted by the wills. Right. Well, and I've said it before. I to advance the light. i a hundred more times. I don't care that you broke your elbow. You know what? I'm going to say it. Uh, I The whole success of the light side rested on Qui-Gon's shoulders. Yep. You know, Obi-Wan would have never been able to reach out to Luke to tell Yoda to finish his training or even convince Yoda to train Luke because Yoda was not on board. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Yoda was disheveled, couldn't have heard the voice of Obi-Wan Kenobi. So it was, that was all Qui-Gon. Yeah, absolutely. All box. If uh, if Qui-Gon, the concept of Qui-Gon would have been around, it would have been cool if Qui-Gon was the one that helped train Luke. Or if they redo it, whatever. Yeah, I really wanted to see Force Ghost Qui-Gon in the sequel trilogy. I know. Uh, JJ, come on, bro. That was, really, that was really high on my list for Rise of Skywalker, but... Yeah, why wouldn't they show the Force Ghosts? What is it? Budget? It can't be budget. It's Disney. They don't. don't they don't believe in money. I mean, they, they all. had all the voices still, so you're still getting them. Yeah, you know what I mean. You hear Qui Gon, but right. it would been cool to see him. It would have been really cool to see him. It would have been really cool to see all the Sith canonize, like all these freaking like imagine. Darth. I think that's the whole thing, though, is that the Sith can't. You know what I mean? That's true. That's true. When that's Palpatine true. Says it's more he's of all a the Sith. He meant that like he the legacy, the power of all the Sith. You know, not that Bruh. they were standing with. Yeah, him. but the the amount of power that he uses, I believed him. <laughs> I'm all the Sith. I'm gonna destroy everything. Probably, yeah. So, um, Qui Gon's Force presence, the most impactful thing in the entire Star Wars, other than the Force itself and the wills. Right. You know what I mean? For sure. The most impactful character. I think so. Is Qui Gon Jinn? I think so. If you disagree, please write in the comments, and we'll argue. Um, okay, this one's for me personally, but you agreed. Um, I would just say the amount of locations, I guess is the word I was looking for. The places you go in this movie are fantastic. Dr. Seuss would be proud. Oh, the places, oh, the places you'll places go. You'll go. In episode in three. Of the Sith. Yeah. Um, I think this was kind of a... This was a short... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? This is one of the shortcomings of... Uh, the first season of Star Wars Rebels, I was like, can we get the freak off of Lothal, please? I know you love the Loth cats, but can we get get out of here? And the show got better when they started to move. And, um, you know, I feel like episode seven, we were on Jakku for a hot minute, and then we were on Starkiller Base. Mm-hmm. Taco Donna, you're there for a little bit, but I would have loved to have been more Taco Donna. Episode eight... Um, Tuesday. You, st- you start in space. And to me, space is in location. I don't care what planet you're over. Um, episode 8, you are 
in space, and then you happen to go to um, Canto Bite, and they could have done a lot. I like the idea of Canto Bite of the Casino Planet, but I think they they could have done different things there. I thought that that was a other than adding DJ space to the story, Las Vegas. there was just nothing really that came from that scene. Um, and then you have Crate. Wish I could shove my fist through this whole stupid, beautiful town. <laughs> yeah. That came out of it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Lovely. Maybe. Yeah, DJ was the highlight of Yeah, Deej. Canto Bite. Deej was the best addition. Um, and then in episode nine, you do get to be on the uh, Resistance base. That's really cool. That's a cool location. You get to finally, uh, being on Mustafar at the beginning, even though you don't realize Mustafar is cool, being on Exegol is really cool. Um, it's the closest we've ever gotten to being on Korriban slash Moriban on screen. Right. So something I want real bad. That being said, we're talking two or three or four locations. When you think tops. Korriban slash Moriban? Do you think Egypt? Because that's what I think. Especially when I think about the Valley of the Dark Lords, and that's where well, the tombs are. Because you can actually see like the location pyramid. in Star Wars Renegade Squadron for the PSP only. Uh, it's a lot like Egypt if Egypt and Mustafar had a baby. Right though, but like you think Egypt? Yeah. I think Egypt. Ancient tombs and things yeah. like that. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure the Sith Temple was a pyramid. Something like that. Uh, yeah. Well, then you have, you know, the holocron, the Sith holocrons are, are pyramid in, sh- in size or right. shape, I mean. Um, so that's really cool. Um, so the thing in episode three is you just go to so many locations. You have a space battle above Coruscant, and I know I said space battles are all the same, but then you're going into atmosphere, and yeah. that's really, really cool. That's when you're still flying half a ship. Yeah, you don't get to actually see ships go in Atmo very much, Mm-mm. which is, a, a, just, like I'd say... It's an important part of space travel is just mm-hmm. you don't really And Coruscant it. always fascinates me because there's so much going on. Like when you can just casually have the Millennium Falcon flying in the background and you have to point it out to someone, there's a lot going on on screen. Right. Um, uh, you are on, you know, Order 66 does a really good job about this because you're on my Guido with Caddy Mundi. You're on Felucia. You're on... Uh, I'm afraid Plo-Koon was, Plo-Koon was on... I want to say he was above Cato Nemoidia. I could be wrong. Um, you're on Utapau with General Grievous and Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're on Mustafar. You're on Naboo for the very, very end. You're on Polis Masa. Polis Masa. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. You finally make your way back to Tatooine. Mm-hmm. Um, and my f- personal fave, Kashyyyk. Kashyyyk. Um, yeah. Such a cool planet. Why in the blue heck weren't there Wookiees with the Resistance in Episode Nine? What the freak? Dude, you could have had... Wookiees running along the, the top of that Star Destroyer, just like everybody else with those horses and stuff. And you could have had Wookiees just ripping Sith Troopers' arms off. That would have been cool. That would have been bawling out I've of control. I've waited my entire life to see a Wookiee rip somebody's arm off, and I still haven't gotten that. I know. It was in a deleted scene it for was, Episode 7. But it's not there. Not there anymore. Um, so the locations. George Lucas pulled out all the stops and was like, it's my final Star Wars. I'm going to take you everywhere you want to go. Yeah. Um, Every kind of planet, you think about it. There's a desert, there's a snowy planet, there's uh, there's a rainforesty kind of planet, there's, there's an asteroid planet. An asteroid planet, or there's a city also. planet, there's a beach planet on Kashyyyk. It's just everything. Also Naboo. Naboo's kinda of got beachy things. Naboo's got beachy things. It's also kind of like the most earthy, I would yeah, say. Yeah, I, I agree with that. What's some of your what's your favorite location from episode three? Maybe Mustafar. I feel like there's the most happening there. Mm-hmm. That's true. I mean, we all know that the most is happening on Coruscant, whatever. But yeah, Mustafar. Well, that is... kind of takes us into our next thing. Uh, you, I'll let you run all the way with this one. Was uh, the murder? Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Of the separatist leadership. I specifically wanted to mention the murder of the separatist leaders, i.e., the murder of uh, Newt Gunray. It's very important to me. Lucidius. <laughs> What was this piece? Yeah, I think maybe the funniest bit <laughs> leading up to that was Palpatine's little pun that he made for himself where he said, my new apprentice, Darth Vader, will take care of you. <laughs> yeah, I said this He's before. He's making little jokes, man. I said this before we started rolling, but I said we should have seen from episode three that we knew that Palpatine had a son out there because he made that sick puns. dad joke. Yeah. Even though I know he was a clone. Got right back. Oh, man. But yeah, yeah there's no, just I that. just enjoyed that. Uh, and I think it 
one, it's very satisfying to watch them all get slaughtered, mm-hmm. you know, because you see everybody that's sitting around the table in Geonosis and Attack of the Clones, and you're like, oh, those scum. Yeah. Uh, and then Nuke Gunray is a constant thorn in your side the entire prequel trilogy. Yeah. It's nice to see him get some. Well, yeah, in episode um, one, he's like, you know, one of the main antagonists, and you find out in episode two that it's like, all these trials in the Senate, and he kept his trade federation. I was like, ah, oh, this is one of those guys that bought his way out, huh? Right. So he finally well, gets what's, have, uh, what's coming to him. What's his name? The guy in charge of the techno union. Watt Tambor. Watt Tambor. You see him get his in the back room. It's so funny because he's uh, he's hiding whoa, behind whoa, that whoa, table, whoa. and like I can just hear him being like, <laughs> Also, no. he can't bend over, so it's where are you going to hide? Yeah, his whole upper half is like a giant tin, he's, so he's like... He's basically in like a daggum steel iron lung, you know, freaking just stuck yeah. upright. Well, he's literally, whenever he's hiding, he's bent over the table and he's like yeah. just staring at Anakin. I think that's freaking hilarious. Um, yeah, but then when you he... get to see like the anguish in Anakin as well because even though I'm sure it has to feel good. It oh, for sure. You, you know, it, it's still painting him. He turns his eyes and you know, you see the Sith eyes for mm-hmm. the first time and um, which is crazy. You see th- his Sith eyes when he's killing the Separatist leaders on Mustafar which is by far the most justified thing he's done so far as a Sith and you mm-hmm. don't see it at all during his attack on the Jedi Temple. That's but, true. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, I, I think that's just, for me, one of the most satisfying moments of episode three. Yeah, it's very satisfying, and it's uh, it's always nice whenever you see a show or a movie do something, and you're like, oh, the loose ends are getting all tied yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so that was very cool. Um, when he walks in that room, and he's like... Oh, yeah. And he's shutting the doors. Or when the battle droid tries to shoot him in the back, and he blocks it mm-hmm. you know, over his shoulder. There's just some really cool stuff that's happening in mm-hmm. that scene. Yeah, Hayden Christensen does a great job in episode three. Um, You'll never change my mind. You know, episode two, Hayden is is not as good. But, again, as the actor, he did exactly what he was directed to do. He did exactly what George wanted him to. So you can't really blame him. And if you blame George, you can just get off this podcast right now. Um, So I really loved... uh, Yeah, I love that. And I saved the uh, juiciest and most uh, vague for last... The tragedy. The tragedy of Darth, Darth Plagueis, Plagueis the, the Wise. Wise. Yeah, just I was asking me some things that I would mention, and just like offhand, I was like, obviously, a tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise. Yeah. Because I think that's the most glimpse that we have on screen into the backstory of the Sith. You know, yep. and you see kind of the mystical powers of the Sith and things that we had always kind of uh, cloning. Uh, dark science things only the Sith know. Yeah, uh, stuff that we had always wanted to know, and there's whole books written about them, but you never really get to see anything about it on screen, you know. Mm-hmm. And you see the obviously the dark side has its own sort of power, but now we're talking about like the nitty gritty. You know, mm-hmm. we're talking about willing the Force to keep things alive. Yep, and it's ultimately the juice that gets Anakin the rest of the way. Um, it's interesting because I think it's um, super cool. we were talking about how funny it is when right after the ah, ah. moment you have uh, you turn and you look at Anakin and you look back at Palpatine and he's like anyway and he's yeah. putting up his hood like yeah I was watching it after the light of look what you have made and yeah. he's got like a whole new outfit from freaking who knows where like the force it just brought dude into so imagine Palpatine has his desk right and. One whole side is just Here's dedicated to his to his drawer with his Sith robe in it, because you have the you know him with Anakin, and then it cuts away, and there's Yoda. We watched it so we could know specifically when it happens. Yeah. Yoda feels up, everybody dying, and then you cut back, and Palpatine's already got his robe on. I'm like, where did he get it from? Right. He's just the master of uh, outfit changes. You know, you see those commercials on Facebook or wherever, where it's like a little tiny ball that's hooked up to a person's like belt loop, and they're like, it's a raincoat. What if he just had, like, his Sith robes just micro-shrunk into a little ball, and he's like, I've been waiting however would, many years I would totally believe that, except for how voluptuous that it is Sith pretty, robe is. It's, it's nice and frivolous. That's like a... I'm not sure that's the right word. It's kind of... <laughs> I don't know. Uh, frivolous but, is, like, just bad spending. I'm thinking that it's very... Um, What do you call those things when you have a, it's like a Shakespearean shirt, just very 
frilly goosey. Yeah, it's very frilly. I guess, the, I guess that's the term I was looking for. Yeah, it's just, uh, it's thick. It's like a nice bathrobe, you know what I mean? But it's got the whole cowl. I, I, it's, just, it's a nice, it's quality, quality it's item. It's got to be burning him up. He's wearing like however many layers and then he puts another robe on top. You got to think that if you're a user of the dark side, you're always kind of cold. Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Like you're cold blooded. You know yeah. What I mean? Yeah. The tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise is interesting. Unless you're immune and you have three hearts, two of which are under voluntary control, and you can mm-hmm, keep yourself mm-hmm, from freezing mm-hmm. to death. Good point. As we saw in Plagueis. Um, it's interesting because now that Plagueis is not considered canon, I really wonder how much of that story, and they haven't ever unpacked it, and I don't imagine that they will in the very near future. But I'm very curious to know. What, uh, how much of that story is 100% true and how much of it is a perversion of the truth to get Anakin's attention? Because Palpatine knows how to say all the right things to get Anakin's attention. Right. Right after he puts his robe on, he says, because the Jedi did not trust you, you were not in on the plan. Um, still trying to convince Anakin that the Jedi mm-hmm. were trying to overthrow him. I... And then he says, if they find out what happened here, they'll kill both of us and all the senators. Yeah. And that's just another tiny jab at, including your wife, yeah. Padme the senator. I think uh, Palpatine's kind of the master of, from a certain point of view. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He takes all the little bits and pieces and makes a half truth. Right. Uh, but I feel like Plagueis, I, I just want to believe in my heart that, that whole story is true. Right. You know. I would love to get a rehash. Yeah, I would love that for sure. Bring back James. Yeah. George. Yeah, and I mean, like, a lot of James's best writing was George's invention, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I would like to, I mean, just like we got to reinvent Thrawn, and it was still brilliant, I'd like to get to reinvent Plagueis. Um, Right. And I think... Dude, um, what if they made him not immune? I think Dark Dark Lords is canon. Yes. And so... Lords of the Sith. Yeah, James took opportunity to kind of re-solidify some of the things about Plagueis in that book as well. Yeah, but Um, James didn't write that one. Yeah, he did. Are you thinking of Tarkin? Am I? Tarkin is written by James Lucino. Lords of the Sith is written by Paul S. Kemp, who also oh, writes yeah. Deceived with Darth Mountain. Maybe I am thinking of Tarkin. Uh, maybe. Tarkin is. Oh, I forget the internet's down. Canon. Yeah, Tarkin is canon, but I just remember uh, specifically that Plagueis' droid 114D was mentioned. Uh in service to I think it's Dark Lords because it's right up in that period of time but that's not written by James Gino yeah I know maybe, maybe it is Tarkin and it's when he's you mentioned it when we, when we did the Tarkin episode it is because he it's when he's going underground yeah to the Sith shrine under the Jedi temple which is pretty cool Woo-hoo-hoo. yeah um so anyway those are ten things we love about Revenge of the Sith about Revenge of the Sith um yeah just one of my favorite, it's maybe my favorite Star Wars movie. I always say Empire Strikes Back, but Re- Revenge of the Sith is right there. I feel, I don't know, just for me, like I said earlier, Revenge of the Sith is the most rewatchable film for me. Yeah. I can just watch it endlessly. Yeah, it's very good. Um, and, of course, you have the whole, like, you are my brother, Anakin. Oh, yeah. You know, all that stuff. God, it just gets you right in the feels. All the highs, all the lows. Mm-hmm. And then finishes... Right where it began, because again, this was the last movie at the time. Yeah, Twin Sons, right? And on uh, as controversial as Which is Ray funny being on Tatooine yeah, I was, about was to say Rise of Skywalker did the same thing. As controversial as that was, I thought it was nice, but it just because it, it tech it is a rehash. You know what I mean? Mm. Like you know when you it, it, it's kind of like it's kind of like Mormonism. You know, it's like we'll add another thing on there. It's almost you know? just like history in general. You know, you see those. You just cyclical things yeah. in history. I just think that the same battles, same wars. I think that if you have grown up having already seen Star Wars and you've watched episodes four, five, and six, and then you watch one, two, and three, it's almost like A New Hope being the starter bookend and Revenge of the Sith being the last bookend makes sense because of how they were released. Mm-hmm. And so you start on Tatooine, you finish on Tatooine. You have Luke in episode four looking off into the twin suns, and then you have a young Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru looking out into the twin suns holding Luke. baby Luke, and um, that's actually uh, Joel Edgerton. 
mm-hmm. who's actually a very famous actor now, but he that's kind of a smaller role back in the day. Um, it's just a great movie. It's a great movie, and it it ended the saga well before we reopened it with Disney. And I like the movies that Disney has put out, but these ones just feel a little different, you know? Yeah. So, I loved Rise of Skywalker, but man, Revenge of the Sith. Whew. All hail King George. Yeah, can't beat it. Uh, so, I think that is it for us. That's it. Episode 30, The 10 Things We Love About Revenge of the Sith. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, share this video, tell your family and your friends about us so we can get rich and famous and do this full time. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. May the force be with you. And remember, the only family you have here is me. (laughs) I adjusted the soundboard. Wrong key, bro. (laughs) I fixed it. What was that? I, it was a cannon explosion. or something. I, I had adjusted it so that I could reference ah, so it wasn't oh, where okay. I thought it was. All right, all right, all right. Well, it's there now. Space, again? space. The only family you have here is me. There it is. It we'll was still you, a nice exploding we'll, noise. We'll see you next week. <laughs>